Hi guys. So Hi guys. today we're going to have a talk by Marek, who I think many of you have already met. Uh, he's doing work on topological quantum computing and specifically quantum computing with one dimensional topological superconductors, which is one of the promising candidates experimentally for topological quantum computing. So take it away. Let's get it started. So today I will introduce the basic concepts for topological quantum computation in 1D. Uh, I will explain my RANA operators, fermion operators, Kitaev chains. Then we will talk a bit about braiding, how to braid those states, how quantum computation in 1D uh, works and how it's expressed using braids. And after that, we are going to introduce a series of quantum gates we worked on the logical Z operation, logical Z operation with arbitrary angles, arbitrary qubit rotation. We will compare those gates. And then on more practical side, we will talk about some quantum algorithms that could be applied using braiding, notably topological teleportation. And then we'll conclude and talk about some other ideas. Let's get started. So, in 1D, in second quantization formalism, fermions can be expressed using fermionic creation and annihilation operators, which obey those uh, anti-commutation rules. And each of those operators has a index, uh, which corresponds to the index, index of the 1D lattice side. And each of those regular fermion operators can be expressed using two Majorana operators, as you can see on equation three and four. So every fermion operator has just one index and every Majorana operator has two indices. One of them is also the index of the lattice site and another one is what we call species, which could be either left, either right. And also the other way around, every Majorana operator can be expressed using fermion operators. So those pictures are equivalent. So we, uh, we use this notation to visualize it a bit. The rectangular boxes are the lattice sites and dots are uh, Majorana operators, potential Majorana modes. And when dots, when two dots are connected, that makes a fermion, a regular fermion. So the first example on top pairs two Majorana modes in the middle side on the free side chain, and that's a regular fermion. But you could imagine different kinds of fermions if you allow to pair other sides than just the nearest neighbors. So there, there is a few other examples of other fermions, which we like to call delocalized fermions or quasi fermions also. And the physical model that uh, is convenient uh, for working with those 1D, 1D topological structures is the Kitaev model. Uh, the Kitaev chain Hamiltonian can be grouped into three kinds of terms. The on-site lattice terms param parametrized by mu, electron hopping terms parametrized by T, and the BCS coupling terms parametrized by delta. If we allow to fix delta equals negative t and replace regular fermions with Majorana fermions, because as you saw earlier, they're equivalent, we get the Kitaev chain model Hamiltonian in even simpler form. And this model has two important physical phases. Uh, one of them is the normal phase, which is what you would intuitively expect to occur. Every fermion is just paired on the same side and occupies only one side. This is the normal phase, but there also exists a topological phase in which fermions are sort of shifted by half side, in which fermions are delocalized in between neighboring sides and there is a special fermion which is highly delocalized between two the furthermost sides. And that's the topological phase. And topological phase persists as long as 
the on-site energy potential mu is less, strictly less than two electron hopping. So uh, I don't know. Maybe you might like to look at the simple example here and just say how these two Majoranas form a single mm. fermion. Yes. Yeah. So as equation seven and eight shows, uh, a fermion can be expressed using two arbitrary Majorana operators, but this is an arbitrary fermion. And here we see regular fermion on equation three and four, which has to be paired on the same side. So basically, the when you say the pairing, say equation three, because the gamma is a index saying it's on site n, and then each physical site is broken into two yes. Majoranas, like the left the two and dots. the right. Yeah. yeah, so each of those boxes there is a single fermion, right? It's and then each of those boxes, yeah. It's a single lattice site. Yeah, a lat lattice yes. site, which normally contains a... A fermion is a pairing. Yeah, okay, okay, yes. Uh, it's where ordinary fermion would be either occupied or not occupied, right? Same box. Yes, the, the same yes. box, yes. So like in the top one, where you've got a link between two Majoranas yes. on the same box that actually corresponds to a regular... Yes. Regular fermion. That's we're correct. We're calling A. And that's correct. And basically that happens because when you got a 2L and a 2R, or well, if mm -hmm. we go back to the previous slide. Yeah. Um, then it fits the definition of A. Yes, because on because, A, we've yeah. got an NL and an NR. Yes. And that is basically a pairing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But then one of these Fs, which is. That could be anything. Yes, those those gammas don't necessarily have to have Majoranas yes. from the same box, right? Yes. It could be from a different box. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so there are those two important phases of the system, and they are the ground states of uh, Kitaev chain Hamiltonian under different parameter regimes. So those two phases of the Kitaev chain Hamiltonian differ from perspective of their energy spectrum, the topological phase has a huge energy difference between excited states and the ground states. And this energy difference is the source of the topological error protection because the ground states encode the logical space and creating an error would require them to jump over it would have to be sufficient excitation to jump over the excited space states. And this, the, the, the larger is this gap, the better the error protection. And as you can see, it, when the mu increases, the gap gets smaller and those states approach each other. Mu increases, the gap gets smaller or bigger? Uh, so the gap between the degenerate states increases because they become no longer degenerate. Hmm. However, the gap between ground state and excited states shrinks. All oh, right, I see. Yeah. So, I see because, um, yeah, so this is a, a BDG. Yeah, that's the BDG diagram. Yeah. So, maybe, maybe you can point out the bits that we're supposed to be looking at. And this gap uh, between the ground states is increasing. So, the topological gap is increasing but the gap between ground state and excited states gets smaller and smaller. Mm. So by the gap getting smaller, you just mean that yes. that small zero and sliver two. of yeah. that between the two yes. lowest lines there is getting smaller. Yes, okay. that makes it easier and easier for the errors. So we know more or less what kind of states we are dealing with. Now let's talk a bit about processing those states. For that, we would apply the braiding operators. Uh, the braiding operator allows you to turn one pairing of fermions, quasi-fermions, into another pairing of quasi-fermions. As on this example on the right, uh, we have highly delocalized quasi-fermion in orange, and we apply left-left braid here, so we basically swap these two modes and the highly delocalized quasi-fermion becomes smaller. 
So now the topological domain reaches the last two sides and there is a smaller trivial normal phase on its left. And this is achieved by applying the braiding operator. In this way, we can apply the sequence of same species braids to delocalize regular fermion into a quasi fermion or vice versa to localize quasi fermion into regular fermion, which provides us with complete description of topological phase transition in terms of in the unitary formalism. And this is achieved using the conversion operator, which can convert the ground states between different phases of the Kitaev chain Hamiltonian in their limiting cases. So that just consists of braid, a sequence of braids yes. that's just on the left may run, is that right? The choice, if you want to braid just left or just right, depends on where is the fermion that you wish to delocalize. For instance, if you want to delocalize this one, you would have to do right, right, probably. Mm -hmm. But you want to delocalize this one, so you do left, left. You could also delocalize one in the middle, then on one side you would do right, right, on the other one, left, left. We just needed to find some kind of convention because there was just too many choices of those operators. So we just established that, okay, it will always be on the far right edge and we always do left, left, just for the convenience. But you could choose different configurations as well and it would work the same. So that forms our logical space. The highly delocalized quasi-fermion is what actually encodes our state. So the logical zero state is the topological regime ground state without highly delocalized quasi-fermion. And the logical one state is the topological regime ground state with the highly delocalized quasi-fermion. So if it is the edges, far edges of the chains that encode quantum information, then we should be able to process it by braiding only the edges. So here is a simplified picture. Each rectangle is a whole chain. It's not just a single side, just for this one figure. And with two such Majorana qubits or two chains, we have four edges and thus six possible braids. And if you do the algebra, you would find, you would check their eigenvalues and eigenstates, and you would find that they produce square root of Z, square root of YX, YY, XX, and XY gates. So there are six possible gates to achieve by doing topological braids of only the edges. So this is two logical qubit. Yes, not just two sides, yeah, just a simplified so, picture. Yeah. All right, well, we'll stop rolling. So, okay. Thanks for watching. See ya. <laughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs>